Superman may be the last son of Krypton, but clearly, he is not the only Kryptonian to come to Earth, let alone the only Kryptonian alive. But is he even the strongest Kryptonian alive? Or does that title go to someone else? I mean, yes, he's uber powerful and all that. But there have been many from his home planet or those cloned from his DNA, and the DNA of others like him that can give Superman a run for his money. In this video, we'll explore all 36 insanely powerful Kryptonians in the DC Universe. So sit tight and get ready to get thrilled. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. Superman What can I tell you about Superman's powers and abilities that you already do not know? Superman the Man of Steel possesses a laundry list of superpowers that could make your head spin faster than a speeding bullet. He's got super strength to bench press battleships, the ability to fly faster than your grandma can knit a sweater, heat vision hotter than your ex's temper, ice breath chillier than your boss's heart, x-ray vision to see through secrets like God sees into your heart, and an invulnerability that would make even the toughest safe jealous. Oh, and let's not forget super speed, super hearing, and he's got Lois Lane. You don't get her unless you really have things to flex. Yep, he's the whole package, cape and all, even a pet super dog. One might say he's the strongest living man, well, Kryptonian on Earth, and they would not be further from the truth. Superman was inspired by pulp magazine hero John Carter of Mars, or at least he was the greatest inspiration behind the character. In fact, his creators Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster took inspiration for his name from the actors Clark Gable and Ken Taylor. I could go on and on about Superman and all the fun trivia around him. But I have almost 40 other awesome Kryptonians to cover, and you probably do not have all day. So let's move to the next one. Hael Hael, initially created as a clone stitched together from various Kryptonian DNA strands, was implanted with fabricated memories and raised with an affectionate bond with Jor-El and Lara. His mission is to preserve Krypton's knowledge and history by venturing to space, mirroring the fateful journeys of infant Superman and young Supergirl. However, Hael's cosmic odyssey was no picnic, and he reached Earth 27 years after Krypton's demise, determined to alter the past and save his home world regardless of Earth's well-being. Despite his belief in noble intentions, Hael's methods are ruthlessly tyrannical, endangering entire solar systems, manipulating allies like Supergirl as mere pawns, and resorting to violence when facing those he can't control, like Superman. His xenophobia towards Earth's inhabitants and readiness for planetary genocide reveals a chilling, neutral, evil alignment, making him a monstrous anomaly even among his own people, whom he paradoxically seeks to restore. Hael is a unique Kryptonian due to his artificial origin, rendering him immune to Kryptonite's debilitating effects and allowing him to maintain his powers even under a red sun. This exceptional resilience may stem from the diverse radiation absorbed during his extensive space travels, which include the likes of black stars and intense quasars. Hael also has the ability to teleport himself and others vast distances. In fact, he even transported colossal structures like Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Additionally, he can manipulate size, shrinking Supergirl to enter Kandor and later restoring her to full size. But he cannot alter his own size. Using his telekinetic abilities, Hael can disassemble matter atom by atom and suspend it at his discretion. In addition to deceiving Supergirl and making her believe she was under attack by Superman, he is also a telepath who taught Supergirl English. Furthermore, Hael exhibits astral projection, crafting intangible duplicates of himself capable of interacting with the environment while remaining imperceptible to all but those possessing heightened psionic abilities. Lastly, following exposure to the star chamber's residual energy, Hael gained chronokinetic abilities, which allowed him to manipulate time and travel through time. Superboy Prime Superboy Prime hails from Earth Prime, a world devoid of superheroes or superhumans, where Superman and other comic icons were mere fiction. Following the Crisis on Infinite Earths event, his reality was erased, and he found himself trapped in a peculiar paradise dimension. Unable to relinquish his past as Earth's greatest hero, his morals gradually twisted, 
leading him to believe that Earth Prime was the only legitimate Earth and that he alone was worthy of the Superboy title. Despite his overwhelming strength, speed and powers akin to Kryptonians, his descent into psychosis turned him into a sadistic and murderous villain making him a formidable and unpredictable adversary in the DC Universe. Superboy Prime possesses a complete set of Kryptonian abilities, albeit at a significantly higher level than most adult Kryptonians, including Superman. His power suit, initially fashioned after the Anti-Monitors, enables him to maintain his powers by collecting yellow solar energy, rendering him impervious to red sun exposure and artificial radiation. Throughout his tumultuous journey, he created and wore multiple iterations of the suit, each enhancing his formidable capabilities. Whether it was stolen or provided by external forces, Superboy Prime's power suit remained a key component of his menacing persona, even as he continued to redefine his role in the ever-shifting DC multiverse. Rao Rao is a fictional celestial body who is often portrayed as a red giant and, in some versions, a red dwarf around which the planet Krypton once revolved. The name Rao is also associated with a supervillain who draws inspiration from Kryptonian mythology. In Kryptonian culture, Rao serves as a name of the sun deity, revered as a god of light and life. Consequently, it is sometimes invoked as an exclamation by Kryptonians. The history of Rao's significance in Superman comics has evolved over time. In the early Superman stories, Krypton's sun remained unnamed and had no direct influence on Superman's powers. These powers were initially attributed to advanced evolution and later to a combination of innate abilities and Earth's lower gravity. However, in 1960, a significant shift occurred, establishing that the yellow sunlight of Earth was responsible for fueling Superman's cells, which gave him his powers. While Rao's red sun radiation actively suppressed the superhuman powers of Kryptonians, this became the standard explanation for Superman's powers during the Silver Age continuity, which persisted until the Crisis on Infinite Earths event. John Byrne's post-crisis version introduced the idea that Kryptonians absorbed solar energy, with Rao providing just enough energy to sustain them whereas Earth's yellow sun supercharged their metabolism, granting them immense power. This interpretation was further supported by the 2004 novel Superman Birthright. However, in recent years, some writers have revisited the concept of red sun radiation, similar to Rao's, as once again capable of neutralizing Kryptonian powers when individuals are exposed to it. In Super Friends No. 47 from August 1981, Superman disclosed that Rao also represented the Kryptonian name for God. This concept was subsequently confirmed in the mainstream DC continuity during the 1982 miniseries Phantom Zone. General Zod During the New 52 era from 2011 to 2016 in DC Comics, General Zod was reintroduced with a new origin story. He was born to scientific parents and after surviving a tragic incident in the wilderness of Krypton, grew up to become one of its top soldiers. Zod developed a deep animosity towards an alien species known as the Char and schemed to justify a war against them. When his deception was uncovered by Jor-El, Zod was banished to the Phantom Zone, along with his followers Feora and Non. Years later, a weakened Phantom Zone allowed Zod to escape to Earth where his Kryptonian powers manifested violently. He clashed with the Justice League but was eventually confined in Superman's Fortress of Solitude. There, he revealed the presence of Feora on Earth and vowed to find her. In the broader DC Universe, Zod continued to appear in various comics during the DC Rebirth era. In December 2017, DC Comics concluded the Rebirth branding, consolidating everything under the broader DC Universe banner. He was imprisoned once again in the Phantom Zone, in the Black Vault, a secretive facility hidden beneath the Laptev Sea. Amanda Waller dispatched the Suicide Squad to pilfer the Black Vault's contents, inadvertently causing Zod to rupture the unstable link between Earth and the Phantom Zone, allowing him to escape once more. Waller attempted to manipulate Zod by implanting a kryptonite explosive in his head, but he proved too formidable surgically removing the explosive and forcing Rick Flagg to sacrifice himself to reseal the Phantom Zone. Zod later established himself as a dictator on another planet alongside the Superman Revenge Squad. An encounter with Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps led to a strategic withdrawal by both sides to regroup. Superman 
Supergirl Kara Zor-El, known as Supergirl, was born on Krypton and is a daughter of Superman's uncle and aunt, which makes her his cousin. Her father sent her to Earth to protect Superman and she was raised by the Danvers family. In National City, she assumed the name Kara Danvers while attending high school. Supergirl's Kryptonian heritage granted her a wide range of powerful abilities, making her one of the DC Universe's formidable superheroes. She has been a member of superhero teams like the Justice League and the Red Lantern Corps. Compared to her cousin Superman, Kara Zor-El sometimes surpasses him in terms of power, but Superman mostly comes out as more powerful. Despite being older, she arrived on Earth as a teenager, limiting her exposure to the Yellow Sun, which fuels their abilities. Superman, on the other hand, had decades to refine his skills and adapt to his heightened senses. Supergirl plays a significant role in the Superman family's narrative as she was the first to bear the iconic symbol in colors, marking the inception of this great legacy. Her contributions have firmly established her as a worthy inheritor of these emblems, proving her claim to be as legitimate as her cousins. In live action, Supergirl made her first appearance in the 1984 film Supergirl, portrayed by Helen Slater. She also appeared in the TV series Smallville, played by Laura Vandervoort, and headlined her own Arrowverse series. Portrayed by Melissa Benoit, Sasha Kaje starred as Supergirl in the 2023 film The Flash, with Helen Slater making a cameo reprising her role. Additionally, a standalone film titled Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow is in development. Doomsday Doomsday's origins trace back to Krypton when it was extremely brutal and almost uninhabitable save for the strongest of the species. Naturally, there was a fierce battle for survival. A mysterious alien named Bertrand sought to create the ultimate life form by sending a baby onto Krypton's deadly surface, repeatedly harvesting and enhancing it after each death using cloning to hasten evolution. This process subjected the evolving life form, later known as Doomsday, to countless deaths, imprinting a deep hatred for all life in its very genes. Over time, Doomsday gained the ability to adapt and evolve against its killers without Bertrand's technology. After escaping Krypton, Doomsday embarked on a murderous rampage across various planets. On Bylin 5, he clashed with Darkseid, causing the planet's atmosphere to turn toxic. Doomsday later landed in Kundia, where clans united to send him into space. He took a Green Lantern's power ring and confronted the Guardians of the Universe on Oa, defeating hundreds of Green Lanterns and prompting a Guardian to sacrifice himself to stop Doomsday. However, a tear in space caused by the Guardian's energy release led to Doomsday's fall. Doomsday's next destination was Kaliton, where he wreaked havoc until the royal family combined their life forces to create the Radiant who defeated him at the cost of a portion of their world. Doomsday was buried, but he later arrived on Earth. Here he fought the Justice League, and after a high-octane and prolonged battle, Cyborg managed to fling Doomsday into deep space, supposedly in a trajectory that would keep Doomsday from colliding with any planet. But of course, that didn't go as planned. Prius Sergeant Prius had been a proud member of the Citizens Patrol Corps, the police force responsible for maintaining peace within Kandor, the bottled city of Krypton, under the banner of the House of El, which was the family that Superman aka Cal El belonged to. Due to the time compression within Kandor, over a century had passed for its inhabitants while only a few years had gone by outside the city. During this time, Prius and his fellow Kandorians came to revere Superman as their divine figure, their god in heaven above. Prius, however, held strong xenophobic beliefs that enforced justice against non-Kandorian dissidents who posed a threat to their way of life. Having said that, he hated Kal-El, whom he believed had committed a grave offense by seemingly killing several Kandorians, vowing to exact revenge. Prius remained unaware that Kal-El was, in fact, the same Superman they had idolized for so long. He also remained ignorant of the fact that the victims were mere illusions created by an alien telepath named Lila. Prius pursued them, but exposure to Earth's atmosphere and the yellow sun triggered profound changes in him, granting him newfound powers comparable to Superman's. Convinced that Kal-El was tarnishing the legacy of the Superman, Prius vowed to assume that responsibility himself, determined to eliminate those he considered impure. 
Prius's rising prominence drew the attention of both Martian Manhunter and Jimmy Olsen, who were captured by Prius and his followers. In a final desperate attempt, Superman tried using kryptonite to weaken Prius, but it failed as Prius revealed an unexpected resistance to kryptonite. However, Superman managed to defeat him by destroying part of Prius's armor, rendering him unconscious. Prius was hospitalized following the battle, and his current whereabouts remain unknown. Sathona Sathona, a malevolent entity from the distant, frigid realms, harbored a profound aversion to warmth and light. Unlike other deities, she could not bear offspring but instead gave birth to ice and frost monsters, bringing not just cold but also fear, despair, and death. Upon her arrival on Krypton, Sithona sought to mate with the sun god Rao, but her true intentions were exposed. She aimed to birth monsters to corrupt the world of light. Rao rejected her advances, sparking the wars of ice and fire. Although Sithona was formidable, the powers of the dawn gods were unparalleled. Ultimately, she was defeated and faced judgment from the Kryptonian gods. Incapable of killing her, Rao chose to exile Sithona to the frozen void beyond existence, where she gathered the souls of the unforgiving dead, vowing vengeance if the god's power ever waned. The scars of the wars of ice and fire were felt for long on Krypton, leaving its people emotionally detached. Following Krypton's destruction, Sithona sensed a trace of Rao's life force in Superman and set her sights on Earth. Here, she confronted Superman at the Daily Planet. Rejecting an alliance with Lex Luthor, she declared Superman her mate but soon realized his mortality. Following this, her true goal remained the eradication of the last kryptonite. Superman, armed with a kryptonite-based weapon, faced Sathona, leading her to Earth's sun, which weakened her. Despite revealing her monstrous form and assaulting Superman, he used a kryptonite grenade to further weaken her. Sathona was ultimately trapped within the sun's core due to the sun's gravity. Ursa Ursa made her debut in the 1978 film Superman. She, alongside General Zod and Nan, stood trial for their involvement in a failed coup against Krypton's government and received a life sentence in the Phantom Zone. The prosecution, led by Jor-El, highlighted Ursa's intense animosity towards humanity, with the exceptions being Zod and Nan. In the film Superman 2, Ursa's misanthropic feelings remained, but her character was portrayed in a somewhat milder manner. Jor-El's speech was modified to imply a romantic connection between her and Zod. In the Richard Donner cut, she was depicted as a ruthless and merciless character who did not exhibit any affection for Zod, but aligned with him due to shared objectives. Ursa had a penchant for collecting and wearing symbols and badges from law enforcement and military figures she had killed. After Superman inadvertently shattered the Phantom Zone, Ursa and Zod traveled to Earth. Here, they compelled the President of the United States to surrender and joined forces with Lex Luthor to locate and confront Superman. Multiple battles followed, culminating in Superman luring them to the Fortress of Solitude. He used red light to strip them of their powers. In the theatrical version, Superman and Lois Lane dispatched them back into the fortress's abyss. However, a deleted scene showed Zod's group being apprehended by human authorities. In the DC Rebirth storyline, Ursa reappeared in the new continuity as Zod's spouse, alongside their son Lor Zod. They allied with Henshaw's Superman Revenge Squad and used the Phantom Zone projector to liberate Zod's army. Ursa, Zod, and Eradicator 2 relocated to another planet with plans to establish a new Krypton. Fiora O Fiora, a Kryptonian warrior engineered for ruthless combat, joined General Zod in a rebellion against Krypton's ruling council. Their goal was to reset Krypton by eliminating what they deemed degenerative bloodlines. They seized the legislation chamber, leading to the council's demise and Jor-El's escape with vital knowledge. Zod and Fiora pursued Jor-El, resulting in his death. They were arrested, put on trial, and sentenced to 300 years in Phantom Zone. Krypton's destruction freed them, and Fiora continued following Zod's plan to rebuild Krypton. Later, she came to Earth with Zod and did what she did in the movie Man of Steel. In the New 52 and DC Rebirth, Fiora and Zod despised Krypton's peaceful ways and triggered a war. They were imprisoned in the Phantom Zone but managed to escape. 
Fiora remained there until Zod tricked Superman into releasing her. She and Zod later clashed with Superman and Wonder Woman in the South Pacific. Power Girl Power Girl, also known as Kara Zor-El, first appeared in the 1976 comic All-Stars Comics No. 58. She is Superman's cousin, but from an alternate universe known as Earth-2. Like Supergirl, she is a Kryptonian, the daughter of Superman's aunt and uncle, and escaped Krypton's destruction in a rocket ship. However, her journey to Earth took longer, and she developed superhuman abilities like strength, flight, and heat vision. Power Girl became a hero on Earth-2, and later found herself stranded on another Earth due to a cosmic crisis. She established a separate identity from Supergirl, with a more mature and level-headed demeanor. Adopting a unique costume and superhero name, she's been a member of various superhero teams, including the Birds of Prey, Infinity Inc., Justice League of Europe, Justice Society of America, etc. Her origin has undergone revisions, but she's primarily depicted as a Supergirl of Earth 2. In some instances, she was retconned as an Atlantean sorcerer's granddaughter, but the Infinite Crisis series restored her as a refugee from the pre-Crisis Earth 2 universe's Krypton, which became her consistent origin story. Jor-El Jor-El is consistently portrayed as a compassionate scientist deeply devoted to his son, Superman. He stands out among Kryptonians for his willingness to embrace unconventional ideas, especially in modern interpretations. After Krypton's destruction, Jor-El's legacy lives on through artificial intelligence. Beyond his intellectual pursuits, some versions depict him as a capable combatant, even proficient in a unique Kryptonian martial art, as seen in Zack Snyder's Man of Steel. In the comics, Jor-El is known for his strategic thinking and takes on the identity of Mr. Oz when he visits Earth. Ultimately, Jor-El is remembered as a skilled scientist who consistently chose the path of righteousness and placed his family above all else. John Kent Jonathan Kent, the eldest child of Superman and Lois Lane, embarked on his crime-fighting journey as Superboy at the remarkable age of 10. However, circumstances led to a change in his perception of time, causing him to return as a 17-year-old with valuable experiences gained from fighting cosmic threats alongside the Legion of Superheroes in the 31st century. With his father absent, John took up the mantle of Superman and dedicated himself to the pursuit of truth and justice, striving to make Earth a better place. During his adventures, John crossed paths with Jay Nakamura, and their relationship blossomed into a romantic one. John's Superboy costume is a unique blend of casual and classic elements. It includes red sneakers, blue jeans, a zippered jacket adorned with the iconic S shield, and a stylishly short cape. Designer Jorge Jimenez aimed to create a youthful and contemporary look, drawing inspiration from modern fashion trends, such as ripped jeans, to ensure John's attire resonates with teenage readers. As a little child, he possessed only super hearing and gradually developed a range of powers, including invulnerability, superhuman strength, heat vision, X-ray vision, freezing breath, super speed, enhanced vision and flight, among others. His power progression is closely linked to his emotions, owing to his young age, which can occasionally lead to inconsistencies in his abilities. John's unique genetic makeup, stemming from a combination of human and Kryptonian DNA, contributes to his ever-evolving powers, potentially surpassing even those of his father, Superman. However, like Superman, John remains vulnerable to magic and the deadly effects of kryptonite. Is this what Terry would want? Don't say her name! Cyborg Superman So in the DC Universe, there are two people who have held the mantle of Cyborg Superman. Hank Henshaw, an astronaut in NASA, faced a tragic accident in space due to a solar flare that damaged his shuttle and mutated his crew, including his wife. He blamed Superman for the incident and the flare. Later, Henshaw's body deteriorated from radiation exposure, but he managed to save his consciousness. Using Superman's birthing matrix, he creates a cybernetic body identical to Superman's and returns to Earth to seek revenge, only to find Superman already deceased. Henshaw becomes a recurring adversary of both the next Superman and Green Lantern, and later joins the Sinestro Corps. The next one was Zor-El, 
Jor-El's younger brother and Supergirl's father, who originally escaped Krypton's destruction with the residents of Argo City. In the New 52 reboot, Supergirl encounters an amnesiac cyborg Superman on the planet Inoxia, who turns out to be Zor-El. Brainiac rescued him from Krypton's destruction and transformed him into a half-man, half-machine scout, searching for powerful species in the universe. Connor Kent, Superboy, known as Connell, and Connor Kent, is a genetic creation, a clone formed using the DNA of both Superman and Lex Luthor. His existence came to be in the wake of Superman's temporary demise, as various contenders sought to carry on the Man of Steel's legacy. His initial costume blended elements of Superman's attire, with unique features like a leather jacket and stylish sunglasses. As fate would have it, Superboy crossed paths with the resurrected Superman, and the two forged an alliance. Over time, he fully embraced his Kryptonian heritage, adopting the name Connell. He co-founded the inaugural Young Justice team alongside his closest allies, including Tim Drake, Cassie Sandsmark, and Bart Allen. Superboy's adventures spanned from battling King Shark in Hawaii to confronting his enhanced clone match. As he continued to evolve, he officially embraced the name Connor Kent, acknowledging his genetic link to Clark Kent. Joining the Teen Titans, Connor adopted a modified look, trading in spandex for a t-shirt and jeans, adorned with the L family emblem. Throughout his heroic exploits, Connor faced formidable adversaries, including Superboy Prime. Tragedy struck during a crisis event, leading to Connor's apparent demise and causing deep grief among those who held him dear. However, Connor's story didn't end there. He had a resurrection and was subsequently adopted by Martha and Jonathan Kent, Superman's foster parents. Settling in Smallville, Connor had typical teenage experiences, such as school, budding romance, and even minor mishaps. Eradicator In a story arc involving Superman and his son Jonathan, the Eradicator initially in a spherical form absorbs Jonathan's blood and realizes that he's mixed Kryptonian and human heritage. It then travels to the Fortress of Solitude to access Jonathan's genetic material and begins assimilating more Kryptonian DNA and Clark Kent's belongings. The Eradicator then takes on a Superman-like appearance. This version of the Eradicator is part of a group formed by General Zod to capture Kryptonian lawbreakers. They extract life forces and imprison them in the Phantom Zone. The Eradicator's journey traces Superman's escape from Krypton as a baby, eventually leading it to Earth, where it attempts to purify Jonathan's human DNA but absorbs Krypto instead, which of course pisses the living hell out of Superman. The Eradicator briefly joins the Superman Revenge Squad, which includes General Zod, Metallo, Cyborg Superman, Mongo, and Black, before their defeat by a coalition of heroes. In terms of powers, the Eradicator possesses a wide range of abilities, including molecular manipulation, genetic modification, energy manipulation, time-space manipulation, and psychic influence. After adopting a boy based on Superman's genetic template, it gains powers similar to Superman, such as super strength, speed, invulnerability, flight, and energy projection. The Eradicator also has advanced intelligence, memory retention, and information processing capabilities. Its energy-based nature allows it to control physical density, possess others, and store the souls of Kryptonians. Secundus Superman Secundus made his debut in Superman, The Man of Tomorrow number 1 million, as part of the DC 1 million storyline. Created by Mark Schultz and George Genty, this character played a significant role in the 853rd century DC continuity. In this future era, the present-day Superman outlives many of his loved ones and fellow heroes due to his Kryptonian physiology. He departs from the planet and leaves Superman Secundus in his place. Secundus, represented by an S symbol as a second Superman to defend Earth, continues the legacy. His origins remain somewhat ambiguous, raising questions about his relationship with the original Superman. He does not appear to be Superman's biological son, as there is no prior mention of such offspring, and the post-crisis version of Superman was depicted as unable to have children with Lois due to their biological differences. It's more likely 
that Secundus is a clone or genetic duplicate, created using advanced technology perfected by Superman, much like Lex Luthor's failed attempt with Bizarro. However, Secundus possesses powers identical to Superman's. This storyline reflected a more optimistic tone, which used to be seen in the Silver Age of comics, unlike the darker themes of the 90s. Lore Zod In one of the story arcs, Superman intercepted a spacecraft hurtling towards Metropolis and discovered a young boy inside. The boy was named Lore Zod, which Superman learned based on Kryptonian inscriptions on the ship. The infant mirrored Superman's own arrival on Earth as an infant. In Action Comics number 851, it was revealed that Lore Zod was indeed a Kryptonian. Superman, with the help of Lois Lane, decided to raise the child as their own, giving him the identity of Christopher Kent. Growing up, Chris displayed remarkable strength and spoke only in Kryptonian. Concealing his powers, especially during school, proved challenging. Batman and Superman developed a device to temporarily suppress Chris's abilities, but that did not work out for long. The family had to find other ways to manage his growing powers. It was later revealed that Chris was the biological son of General Zod and Ursa, raised in an isolated section of the Phantom Zone without its time-dilating effects. Zod sought custody of his son, leading to a conflict that escalated when Zod invaded Earth. However, Superman and Lex Luthor joined forces to thwart Zod's plans. Ultimately, Chris chose to enter the Phantom Zone, knowing he might never return. In a different comic iteration following the New 52 and DC Rebirth eras, Lore Zod reappeared with altered allegiances, aligning more closely with his biological father, General Zod. Non. In October 2006, film director Richard Donner, known for his work on the first two Superman films, co-authored action comics with Jeff Johns. The story introduced an unidentified Kryptonian boy who crash-landed in Metropolis and found refuge with Lois Lane and Clark Kent. Yep, this was Lorzod. Soon after, three more Kryptonians arrived in identical vessels, General Zod and Ursa, claiming the boy as their own. In these comics, Non appeared more physically imposing than in the Superman 2 movie, but retained his familiar personality. According to the story, Non was a friend of Jor-El and member of the Kryptonian Council, where they discovered Krypton's impending doom. Leading a separatist movement, Non was captured by the Science Council and subjected to a lobotomy, reducing him to a minimally verbal brute. Despite this transformation, traces of his original personality and kindness remained, especially when interacting with young children. In an Action Comics annual, it was shown that Non displayed docile and caring behavior towards Christopher Kent during his early childhood. After being re-imprisoned in the Phantom Zone by Superman and Christopher, Zod, Ursa and Non returned to the prison. What am me? Bizarro, that's what you am. Bizarro, the Joker gained access to the fifth dimensional powers of Mr. Mix's Pitilek, making himself the Emperor and creating his twisted version of Superman known as Bizarro. Bizarro was intended to mimic Superman's role, but with the Joker's bizarre and chaotic intentions, General Zod captured Bizarro and subjected him to torture simply because he resembled Superman. After escaping with Superman's assistance, Bizarro established his headquarters called the Graveyard of Solitude on Joker World. He would sporadically emerged to either help or hinder Superman, with his actions appearing entirely unpredictable, causing trouble regardless of his intentions. Bizarro received an invitation to join the secret society of supervillains and challenged Zoom to a race. Due to Bizarro's unusual way of speaking, Zoom and Cheetah weren't sure which outcome of the race would persuade Bizarro to join. They raced across the planet, but Bizarro's erratic path caused friction with Zoom. Despite some conflicts, Bizarro eventually considered Zoom his friend and joined the society. Nam Ek Since Nam Ek was of Kryptonian origin, he gained exceptional abilities when exposed to a yellow sun. He served loyally under General Drew Zod and joined in Zod's scheme to conquer Krypton before its tragic destruction, which eventually led to their imprisonment in the Phantom Zone. He came to Earth to find Kal-El and the Growth Codex. After several clashes with Kal-El, Namak was returned to the Phantom Zone through a temporary portal created using Kal-El's spaceship against the Black Zero. Namak has a robust build, dark hair styled in a buzz cut, and a thin beard. He typically dons a black Kryptonian skin suit garment adorned with a complex house of of Ek Glyph beneath dark brown Kryptonian battle armor, which encases his entire body. 
Calvin Ellis, a.k.a. Kal-El, Superman of Earth-23. In the final days of Krypton, scientists Jor-El and Lara launched their infant son Kal-El into space just before the planet's catastrophic demise. Kal-El eventually landed on Earth and was found by the compassionate Ellis family, who named him Calvin. Raised with a strong sense of justice and the determination to stand up for what's right, Calvin developed incredible Kryptonian abilities under Earth's yellow sun and assumed the mantle of Superman. Superman as Calvin dedicated himself to defending peace and championing the oppressed. He faced foes like Lex Luthor, established Fort Superman as a stronghold, and served as an inspiration to a new generation of superheroes who formed the Justice League. However, his most remarkable role came as Calvin Ellis when he was elected as the President of the United States. With the support of his dedicated assistant Courtney and the reprogrammed alien intelligence Brainiac, Calvin worked tirelessly to protect the world using both political acumen and superhuman strength. Sorel. Sorel made her debut in Superman, the 10 cent adventure issue number one, created by Steven Siegel and Scott McDaniel. She gained attention by defeating the radioactive villain Radeon and boldly claiming to be Superman's daughter. This shocked and angered Lois Lane, who suspected an affair between Superman and heroes like Wonder Woman or Zatanna due to Sir El's resemblance to Superman. However, it was later disclosed that Sir El came from a grim future, sent back by the future Smiths. In her future, heroes like Batman and Wonder Woman had become cyborgs, and the world was in chaos. Confusion further ensued when Sir El addressed Lois's mommy. Despite initial support from Superman, a Star Labs test revealed she was not Lois's biological child. Sorel, also known as Mia, possessed powers similar to Superman's but lacked a biological connection. She joined the modern Superman family, teaming up with Supergirl, Superboy, Crypto, and others to fight crime. As time passed, it became clear that Sorel was manipulated as part of Brainiac's scheme. Realizing the impending dark future, Sorel sacrificed herself by disappearing into a time portal to prevent her own birth. Following this, Sir L's appearances in comics became infrequent. In one story, she teamed up with various versions of Supergirl from alternate realities to assist Superman and Batman. Seigel, Superman's grandfather. Seigel, selected by the master of the gestation chambers, was paired with a woman of compatible genetic lineage, resulting in the birth of a son, Jor-El. The family lacked love and affection, and Seigel considered Jor-El to be strange because he seemed out of touch with Kryptonian traditions. Despite this, Jor-El was well-versed in Kryptonian history. When a deadly radiation outbreak known as the Green Plague began afflicting Krypton, thousands succumbed to its effects, including a respected individual named Zon M. This left Zon M's mate Lara without a suitable partner for procreation. The master of the gestation chamber selected Jorel from the register of citizens as a potential mate for Lara. Segel, aware that his son had not yet completed the Kryptonian rite of passage into adulthood, felt it necessary to inform Jorel about the opportunity presented by the Kryptonian lords. Jorel expressed his willingness to continue the family line, but shocked his father by requesting to meet Lara, the prospective partner. This request deviated from Krypton's traditional norms, leading to Segel's anger. However, the master of the gestation chambers approved the request, and Jor-El later married Lara. Shortly thereafter, the Green Plague took the life of Segel. Van Z, Nightwing Van Z, a Kandorian, once used scientist Zach Kull's enlarging ray to increase his size and temporarily leave the city of Kandor. During this time, he met Lois Lane and developed strong feelings for her. Aware of Superman's affection for Lois, Van Z decided to search for an Earth woman who resembled her. He eventually found Sylvia DeWitt, a wealthy heiress and the two fell in love. They married and briefly resided on Venus, where they had two children, Lily and Lyle. Sylvia was even granted power similar to those of a Kryptonian through a special serum. Later, the family returned to Kandor. Vanzi occasionally acted as a stand-in for Superman when the Man of Steel was unavailable. In time, he took on the role of Nightwing, a Kandorian superhero originally created by Superman and Nor Khan. Crypto 
Crypto, also known as Crypto the Super Dog, is a fictional superhero canine who serves as a pet to the House of L. In most storylines, Crypto serves as Superman's loyal pet dog and is typically depicted as a white dog. Although his breed can vary, Crypto's appearance draws inspiration from various dog breeds, including but not limited to the Labrador Retriever, Dalmatian, White Shepherd, Husky, Dingo, and Pie Dog in Indian versions, or Tugo in Chinese versions. Crypto made his debut in a Super Boy Adventure published in Adventure Comics No. 210 back in March 1955. He was created by writer Otto Binder and artist Kurt Swan and was originally intended as a one-time character. However, due to the enthusiastic response from readers, Crypto quickly returned four issues later and became a significant character in Superboy's world. In his original pre-crisis portrayal, Crypto possessed a range of powers equivalent to those of an adult Kryptonian, adapted to his smaller size and canine nature. These powers included heightened sensory abilities, such as keen smell and hearing, surpassing even those of Superman. In the DC's League of Super Pets, Crypto shows multiple powers and abilities, including a special attack known as the Solar Paw Punch. This impressive move harnesses the energy of the sun, allowing Crypto to deliver a powerful solar-infused strike to his opponent. Flamebird Flamebird, originally created by Rao, had the initial mission of destroying Vox creations on Krypton to inspire greater achievements from Vox. Her encounter with her fellow god and brother, Nightwing, led to a deep romantic connection between them, which is clearly messed up. However, when Flamebird went against Vox's wishes and destroyed his most cherished creation, Vox sought vengeance against both Flamebird and Nightwing. He constructed a towering spire made of Kryptonian sunstone crystals, which resulted in Nightwing's imprisonment in the Phantom Zone when Flamebird attempted to dismantle it. Subsequently, Flamebird took on a physical form and became known as Tara Akvar, a Kryptonian female. Zaydu, Zaydu, a Kryptonian researcher, was imprisoned in the Phantom Zone for unethical experiments. Naturally, he held a deep grudge against Jor-El's family. In the Phantom Zone, Zaydu built an ecto suit but couldn't complete it before Krypton's destruction. Years later, he briefly swapped places with Superman using a Phantom Zone projector, but failed and returned. In the Zone, Zaydu established a base called Ethropolis and lured Psy, a psychic with interdimensional powers. He aimed to escape but was thwarted by Sai, Supergirl, and Batgirl. Though defeated, Zaydu vowed revenge. Lara Lorvan Lara Lorvan, the mother of Kal-El, was an incredibly loving and devoted spouse to her husband Jor-El. Her profound affection for her family was evident in her unwavering dedication. However, Lara was also a brilliant scientist on Krypton, matching her husband's intellect. As a native of Krypton, she possessed the typical Kryptonian powers, including flight, super strength, speed, healing, enhanced stamina, and various vision abilities. However, like other Kryptonians, she was vulnerable to some substances like red, blue, yellow, black, and gold kryptonite. In the New 52 continuity, Lara Lorvan maintained her status as a Kryptonian scientist and medical practitioner. She received a well-rounded education in both the arts and sciences at the Kryptonian Military Academy and was skilled in combat. In the alternate reality of Dark Knights of Steel, Lara and Jor-El flee Krypton's destruction while she is pregnant with their child. They land on Earth, where Lara gives birth to their son Kal-El. Over time, she rises to become queen of the Kingdom of Storms amid the turmoil of their new home, Allura. Allura Enze, the daughter of Enze and wife of Zorel, was the mother of Supergirl and through her marriage to Zorel, the paternal aunt of Superman created by writer Otto Binder and artist Al Plastido. Allura made her first appearance in Action Comics number 252 in May 1959. In the story arc titled The Supergirl from Krypton, covered in Superman Batman issues 8 through 13, Allura and Zorel made arrangements for their daughter Kara's journey away from Krypton. During this storyline, Lex Luthor used black kryptonite to split Kara into her good and evil halves. The malevolent side of Kara claimed that Zor-El sent her to Earth with the intent of eliminating his nephew Superman, believing her father held resentment toward his elder sibling and wanted to end the lineage of Jor-El. In the television series Supergirl, Allura is portrayed by Laura Benanti in seasons 1 and 2 and later by Erica Durance in seasons 3 and 5. This version of Allura is a member of the prestigious Kryptonian Science Council and has a twin sister named General Astra. 
also played by Laura Benanti. Astra becomes a central antagonist in the first season, along with her husband Nan, as they attempt a coup and seek to dominate Earth. Astra's motivations add depth to the storyline as she tries to convince Kara that her actions are for the betterment of the planet. Bar L and Lilo Bar L and Lilo are among Superman's few living ancestors. They arrived on Earth just before Superman's return from the Bizarro invasion and took control of Metropolis, placing crystalline structures throughout the city. Superman confronted them, but they initially ignored him, thinking he was the wind. Bar L recalled Jor L as a young dreamer. They then went to the Fortress of Solitude, remodeled it, and replaced the statue of Jor L and Lara with one of themselves. Bar L became disillusioned with Superman when he saw many souls trapped in the Phantom Zone, believing they were worthier than humans. This caused a rift, and Bar L and Lilo scolded Superman and hurled him into the moon, cracking it. Back on Earth, they confronted Superman again at the Daily Planet, but began losing their abilities and sight due to exposure to kryptonite from passing through Krypton's debris field. Superman tried to cure them but failed, leading Bar L to request being sent to the Phantom Zone using the Phantom's own projector. He apologized to Superman and expressed that their legacy lived on through him. What would you have us do, Al? Look to the stars, like our ancestors did. Jack Sur. After General Zod's battle with Superman and the U.S. military, Jack Sur informed Zod that he had located the Codex, which Jor-El had merged into Superman's DNA. He claimed he could extract it from Superman, dead or alive. Later, Jack Sur and other members of the Sword of Rao including others like him, were pulled back into the Phantom Zone when Nathan Hardy crashed a plane with Superman's ship into the Black Zero, creating a temporary singularity. Jack Sir was the only one who realized the human's plan and understood the consequences of this action. Genetically engineered as a scientist in the Kryptonian Thinker Guild, Jack Sir is highly intelligent but lacks the compassion of his fellow scientist, Jor-El. He had no qualms about experimenting on a weakened and restrained Superman to find the growth codex for General Zod. Beppo Beppo was originally a test animal used by Jor-El in a space flight project to ensure his son's survival during Krypton's destruction. He stowed away on the craft that saved Superman. Years later, Beppo caused mischief with his superpowers in Smallville. Superboy eventually led him into deep space to prevent further trouble. Beppo later returned and joined the Legion of Super Pets after meeting Supergirl, Crypto the Super Dog, and Streaky the Super Cat. Divine During a date between Power Girl and Jimmy Olsen, Divine interrupted, leading to a confrontation between the two versions of Power Girl. Divine, a clone of Power Girl, threw a car toward them, endangering Jimmy. But Kara saved him. Despite Power Girl being distracted by a nearby robbery, Divine couldn't gain the upper hand in their fight. When Superman arrived to offer assistance, Power Girl declined and single-handedly defeated her clone. Cal Kent In the 853rd century, a descendant of Superman named Cal Kent, who is also a part of the Superman dynasty, is preparing for the return of the original Superman, Kal-El, from his centuries-long stay in the Solar Fortress of Solitude. To celebrate this event, the Justice Legion Alpha travels back in time to recruit the ancient Justice League of America to participate in the festivities. Before their departure, Cal Kent assists Superman in quelling a prison riot at Bel Rev, during which he mentions his past battles, including one against the Chronovore alongside the Superman squad. Once the Justice League departs for the future, a crisis ensues as Our Man releases a virus conveniently known as the Our Man Virus, which infects both living beings and technology. It's revealed that this virus is the nascent form of Solaris, an artificial intelligence seeking a physical form. The virus spreads rapidly as Solaris searches for a suitable vessel. This leads to Starman's sacrifice as he creates a black hole to defeat Solaris. Unable to use their time machine to return to the 853rd century, Superman Secundus breaks through the time barrier to bring the Legion back in time, just in time for the final confrontation with Solaris and the arrival of Superman Prime. Cal Kent possesses a range of evolved Kryptonian powers, including superhuman strength, invulnerability, super speed, heightened senses, vortex breath, flight, X-ray vision and heat vision. He also has additional abilities such as superhuman ESP, force vision, telepathy, electromagnetic manipulation, and 10 extra senses, thanks to various genetic and cosmic influences in his lineage. 
His powers are sustained by the original Superman, Kal-El, and Earth's Super Sun, causing his abilities to diminish when in the past. Cal Kent's incredible speed and power are so pronounced that he can even punch through time itself, although this depletes his energy significantly. Furthermore, he is immune to kryptonite, red sun radiation, and potentially psionic attacks. Additionally, he is exceptionally intelligent, rivaling Brainiac 5 in his ability to process vast amounts of information simultaneously. The Superman Dynasty's descendants, including Cal Kent, are committed to protecting Earth and the solar system and have the potential for even greater powers as they evolve. Marvelous Verdict In conclusion, the world of Kryptonians in DC Comics has evolved significantly since Superman's groundbreaking debut. Over the years, new Kryptonians have emerged, each with their unique set of abilities and power levels adding depth and diversity to the DC multiverse. While not all Kryptonians possess the same level of power, they all share the extraordinary capabilities granted by Earth's Yellow Sun. From Superman's iconic might to the introduction of new powers, the legacy of Krypton lives on through these formidable beings. As the comic book universe continues to evolve, so too will the stories and characters of Krypton, ensuring that their impact endures for generations to come. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone and see you soon.